Good morning, good morning. Hey, the sun just came out. Actually, it's been kind of cloudy and, and, and overcast all morning while I've been here. And just now, about 10 seconds ago, the this, this sun came out and spoiled our, our floater. But it's, uh, it's patchy cloud today. Clouds will come in front of the sun again in a few minutes. You'll see our floater come back, I'm sure. <laughs> Noisy shoes. <laughs> That's not our shoe lady, but uh, who knows. As I was posing just now, I, I met the shoe. I didn't meet her. I know on Tuesday morning I was coming back from the pool and I needed to make a, a color photocopy or something. I had my USB stick in my pocket, so I took a different route back from the pool and I came back to the convenience store near Donkey and came back down this street. Normally when I get back from the pool, I'm coming through the back streets. But I came down the main street from Donkey and just as I turned out of the convenience store to come down here, across the street is our friend, the shoe lady, who was here years and years and years ago. I could hear nothing. Very, very, very quiet shoes. But it's the same lady. She's on the other side of the street. I'm on this side of the street. and. Uh, So after all these years, she's still here. Not the same time. That would have been about seven. Pool at seven. Swim to seven twenty-four. Shower at seven thirty-four. Would have been about seven forty, somewhere around there. Okay, okay, okay. What's happening this morning? Uh, the the work end of the stream is going to mostly be carving. We're going to pick up where we left off. Was it a week ago? A couple of weeks ago? on the, the recut of the onsen design. The one I was carving this last week, it's gone. It's over at Kubota-san's house and in an unusual pattern for us this time. We asked Kubota-san to do quite a lot of our subscription printing. He loves them. They're, they're small, they're simple from his point of view. They're just, just uh, it's free money. He can't believe we pay him so much for those things. They're so easy. They're a quarter the size, less than a quarter the size of an old back print, which is a struggle. So he's happy. But this time it's different because, we, because we're so short on printing resources right now, Sugasan's leaving two weeks ago has really, really, really clobbered us. We've lost like a third of our printing strength upstairs. And Rei Chan's going to Hong Kong. Aimi San's off with her kids. We're struggling for printing resources. So when it came time to get the test printing done for this, I could clear the decks and try and do it myself. We sent it to Kubota Sam. So he opened the package yesterday and he's like, where's the sample? He called me. I said, I've been waiting for your call. So he's okay. He'll do that. He doesn't mind that work either. I know we pay extra for it, of course. Normally when he does a batch of printing, we pay it per sheet. For this, we will pay the service. He will send us a bill after it's done. It's probably going to take him, he'll do a quick run up in one day and he may then either send me that sample or he may want to do a second run up if he hasn't hit it what he thinks is exactly right the first time. So we'll see. So I'll have to pay him for one day or two days. He'll send the bill and it'll be the equivalent of a few hundred dollars per day. When he's getting paid for prints, it's paid per sheet. When you're doing other work like that that can't be quantified, he just sends the bill. And we will happily, happily, happily pay it. Someone's saying, do people not acknowledge each other on the streets here? There's no reason. We were strangers. I don't know this lady at all. I mean, I don't know this person. Just I'm walking down one side of the street. She's walking down the other side. If we knew each other, of course, there'd be an acknowledgement. But don't, don't misunderstand. This is simply a lady who works near here. I know, if you don't know the backstory, it's okay. Don't worry about it. There's a long, long, long backstory for our shoe lady story. So don't worry. I can't tell the whole story here now. Paper is out. Thank you, Tom. There's two people here. Ishikawa-san, she's already here. She came when I was still in my futon this morning. I had already got up. I got up with my, my bladder alarm clock. Uh, she's doing uh, two things. She's doing the Crow on Shrine Gate print and then she's doing a bit of a reprint. The print that she finished for us a couple of weeks ago, she handed it in to me, but I we had a little meeting and uh, 
I asked her to redo a couple of the colors. And the paper hadn't been trimmed yet, so it went back into her stack. She re-moistened it, got the blocks out again, and deepened up a couple of the colors. She didn't really want to do that, but we agreed that it, uh, it needed to be done. John's got it. I woke up this morning at bladder o'clock. Are you quoting me or is that your own situation? You don't need to answer that. Whatever. It's okay. Someone's saying, am I trying to get some Austrian cherry? I've done nothing about that, of course, at all. I'm just overwhelmed by the flood of work this week. And Ordan Gaksha's block is sitting here, right next to me here. On the floor, we haven't got it upstairs. We haven't cut any paper for it. We haven't sized. We haven't done it. We've done nothing yet. He's coming back on Wednesday next week, and before that, I will have to get something done. But have I tried to order wood? No, of course not. How am I going to do that? At the moment, that knowledge of the wood is simply, it's a new data point for us, that's all. That there is another kind of wood out there that could possibly be useful for us. That's all it is at the moment, is a data point. The work here is just flooding over. We got new, we got some more, I guess I'm going to say bad news. It's not bad news on the face of it. We got a phone call on, was it Monday or Tuesday, from our tax accountant. Now, this was not unexpected. He our year end is June. He did all the paperwork for us, put in our tax forms, which are corporate tax, uh, consumption tax, consumption tax refunds, and all that kind of stuff. And he got a, he phoned us on was it Monday or Tuesday? He said he had a phone call from the tax department, and they want an audit. They're coming for two days, October the fourth and fifth. They want me and the uh, I am as an executive and our tax accountant and our bookkeeper. We're supposed to clear the decks for two days. They're coming at 10 o'clock on uh, October the 4th, a minimum of two days. And they want all our records since we became a company, which is three and a half years ago. They want us to have all our records ready for examination. And they're specifically interested in why we have requested such a large uh, tax rebate for our consumption taxes. And this is a major deal. This is an audit. This is a real, real, real big deal. And I personally have to be there, required by law. And I'm the one who personally has to uh, respond to the questions. I'm allowed to pass them on. They will ask me the question. I will turn and ask our accountant, etc., etc., etc. But I am the, uh, I'm the guy whose signature is on the bottom line for it. Someone says, seems like discrimination. No, 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 not at all, not at all. In fact, we've been waiting for this because, think about this, we are a tax-free shop here. We registered as a tax-free shop when we opened the shop so that tourists wouldn't have to pay, pay, pay the taxes. And we roll along, roll along, roll along. We have asked for a major tax rebate. Oh, I don't want to give a tax lecture, but how can I explain this without... Okay, very simple system. A company that's not a tax-free shop, you buy stuff from your suppliers, paying them tax. You sell things to your customers, charging them tax. You receive more tax than you paid because the prices are, of course, higher. So you deduct from the money you receive from your customers, the tax money, you deduct from that tax the tax you paid, you send the difference to the government. And each company all the way up the chain does this. Perfectly normal way of doing things. Now, a tax-free shop like ours, we pay consumption tax on all our supplies. When we buy washi from Iwano-san or pigment from our pigment supplier, we pay taxes on it. But because we are a tax-free shop, we don't receive tax from our customers. Now, the government recognizes the anomaly here. That paper that Iwano-san made was actually destined to go overseas, but nobody knew it, so we didn't really need to pay the tax back at the beginning. So they give us a refund of the tax that we paid on all the products that we sold overseas or as tax-free. Just a minute, where does this thing go? This one, does it go here? Or do, no, it doesn't go down here. This one goes here. This one goes here. 
there. What did I do last time? Excuse me one second, let me get a print. Anyway, I know the, the taxing, of course, because we are dealing with I know, foreigners, menze, tax-free, our customers don't pay us tax, so we get the huge, huge rebate. All okay, all understandable. The thing is, over the past three or four years, we have asked for that large rebate every single year, even though there's been a pandemic and the airports have been closed. So they are thinking, what's going on? How did these guys run a tax-free business when the airports were closed, when there were no people here? Because we've asked for the same large rebate. Well, the answer is simple. Although we are a tax-free store, it's not just people coming in the door. We sell online. And the stuff we sell online is also the customers don't pay us tax, so we get this rebate. So, of course, we know that there's no anomaly here. But their computer shows a large tax rebate for a tax-free shop every year. And every other tax-free shop in town must have dropped down dramatically during those two years and we jumped right across the chasm we didn't drop down at all and their computer must have said red alert red alert red alert so these guys are coming <laughs> and it may all be over in 10 minutes we can just show them look we've got online here's a printout there's our sales 96 percent overseas during the pandemic year four percent within japan and they might do a head slap and say okay guys thanks very much we're out of here goodbye Dream on. <laughs> so this is not an audit that we are afraid of. We have very, very careful bookkeeping. We know what we're doing. We know the reason for all these uh, perceived anomalies, but they don't know this. So if it's as simple as that, that we just have to show them this data and then they'll pack up and leave, that's okay. But there's another complicating factor and it could really 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 be difficult for us they're going to come in put their briefcases on the table and then say hello and we're going to give them tea and stuff like that and they're going to say something like this okay good i don't know can you please give us a login for your accounting software by the way what, what type of accounting software are you using is it the uh, yaoi system or is it the money forward system and we're going to say uh, actually, uh, none of the above. We have a uh, custom accounting system. And they're going to say, What? And that's when things might get sticky. Because as the conversation goes forward, they're going to learn that Mokohankan is a company that has a completely independently created, built in house accounting system. Designed and constructed by, guess who? The company president. And if that doesn't set off a whole bunch of alarms and rings in their head, then I don't know what will. I mean, come on, come on, come on. They're going to say, show us, print out your sales from last year or something. I'll click, I'll press a button and there we'll print out the sales. And this software was designed and created by the guy who owns the company, who sort of has an interest in maybe, you know, like keeping his taxes low and stuff like this. So I have no idea how they're going to react to this. It's going to be interesting. And these two guys from the tax office, of course, they I 
presume they won't be computer coders. You know, they might say, well, show us the software, and I can open my screen and scroll through reams of code. That's really not going to uh, impress them very much. And if I were in their shoes, it wouldn't impress me either. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It could get sticky. Okay, here we go. We're going to make this thing up. This is a line that cuts through the stamp. Let's just wiggle around, make it thin, make it thick, try and keep the curve something sensible. Here we go. There it is. We have to do it again down here. Some say there is a ton of business that don't have such a system, so it might not be too unusual for the tax guys. I get it. I know a lot of the places they come to, businesses our size, probably have like a shoebox or something, you know, whatever. At the end of the year, they give the shoebox to the bookkeeper and say, go for it. We're not that kind of system. We have, you know, day by day, perfect accounting. But if I were a tax person coming into a company like this, with the type of business model, remember, we take payments in many different currencies, uh, we, we're global, we sell globally, all our taxing is done here in Japan. It's complex, it's really, really complex. And if I were a tax guy coming in and the, the owner of the company, the guy with the biggest uh, reason to try and reduce taxes, and if I found out that that guy was the guy who had his hand on the software throttle, I mean, we're talking Elon Musk territory at Twitter or something, right? You know, this, it's this sort of thing, and I would sit there and think, you know, like, we can't trust this guy. The, by, by definition, they're not going to trust me. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're okay. Like I said, we don't actually cheat anything. I, even though as the, as the owner, I have a, a, in what's the word? I have a, my own interest is to reduce taxes. Actually, it's not. I'm not trying to reduce taxes at all. Dave's way of doing things here. I just want to do everything exactly perfectly. The control freak guy who's trying to cut prints is the control freak guy with the accounting software. I want every dot and every yen and everything perfectly in place. And if it means I pay X taxes, so be it. I'm not hostile. I like the society I live in. I'm enjoying the benefits. I will, of course, pay, pay the taxes, you know. Dave couldn't be. It's not in my DNA to be a tax evader per se. You know, we just want to do it properly. But they don't know that. So all we can do is uh, explain what we're doing, give them the outline, and then sit back and wait for questions. And try and think about, get prepared for the kind of questions they, we think they might ask. And if I were in their position, I would be trying to f ask, let's verify the income this guy's declaring. He says they got that much money, they made that many sales. It's possible, many companies do this, they try and hide income. Or they try and inflate expenses. So if I were a, an inspector here, I would figure out how can we verify these two things. Are they hiding income? And that, all we can do is we can show. We can go into our sources of income, which are, for the most part, the two companies, PayPal and Square. We have next to no cash business. And because we're shipping overseas, it's going to be clear to them we don't have cash revenue from overseas, obviously. And we can show them our numbers from Square and PayPal, which are, are verifiable by those two companies. We just log into our account and while they're watching,
So I think we're okay on this. And we haven't inflated expenses. We have receipts and or documentation for everything that we declare as an expense. But man, it's going to be trouble. Oh, it's going to be trouble. And oh, yeah, my son, my partner here, he was saying, you know, I think we're going to be cool because we can show all the documentation. But he said what, what he's worried that they will say as they are leaving is, okay, look, uh, we get this, but uh, this is not acceptable to us. Please switch to a, a uh, what do you call it, a tax-approved, tax agency-approved system of bookkeeping before next year. In other words, telling me to lose my job, shut down my software, and... and, and move to a, a standard generic accounting package. And if they say that, then we've got a fight on our hands because there's no way I'm going to do that. No way. My God, we have business on seven continents and four different currencies and all that stuff flows through automatically to our shipping system which talks to the post office. And they want me to switch to a little package accounting software. Give me a break. So we'll see. And that may be where the, the gloves come off. I don't know. Did I say seven continents? That's an exaggeration. I'm sorry. So there's a thing, somebody's commenting, uh, we sell woodbuck prints, they should know automatically. Nobody in Japan's interested in this. So I get it, I get it, I get it. I think the thing is, remember, we are a tax-free shop that they know was closed for two years, but we still asked for the rebate. And if I were in the tax agency too, I would think the same thing. There's something fishy here. We know there were no tourists. How can a tourist shop be asking for a rebate? So it, we're really, really, we were sort of waiting for this. And we're not panicking, we're not panicking, we're not panicking, we're not panicking. <laughs> <laughs> and also, too, I've been audited before, I know, personally, as a, as a, what do you call it, Kojin Jigyo, as an independent craftsman. I was audited about 25 years ago. We've talked about it. We've told this story on the, screen, on the stream before, <laughs> the PayPal story. <laughs> I've been audited once before, majorly this way. Two people are coming, get the accountant ready, have a meeting, get all your paperwork ready. It's happened to me once before here in Japan. And then at the music store where I used to work in Canada, we... Whatever, that's a story that's too much for here. But we were majorly audited in a hostile audit. We had been caught at the border bringing things through from America. Sheet music, high, not drugs or anything, but we'd been caught at the border in America bringing sheet music through without properly declaring all the packages. I had actually been taken in by the RCMP that day and I was released without charge, but whatever. But after that, the tax authorities came and this was a, that was a hostile audit. It was a team. Oh my God. I was only working there. I wasn't the owner, but ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. So I've seen that part of it as well. So I learned a few rules, you know, answer the questions and don't uh, volunteer any more information. Just don't get chatty. Be friendly. Don't be fooled by the fact that they seem really friendly at first, because this is their, their method of operation. They don't come in hostile. They come in chatty and friendly, and they sort of get you to relax. And then you're willing to, to open up about stuff, and they'll ask you a question, and you answer the question, and you talk some more. I've learned the rules. You don't do that. Accept their friendliness coolly. Don't fall for anything. Uh, answer their questions, and then stop talking, you know. We've got some experience here, so.
It's still uh, muggy here, hot and muggy in Tokyo, I you know. It's whatever, it's the middle of September now, we're coming up to the equinox, you know, halfway between summer and winter, and it's still, still hot and muggy. I, got it, I did my laundry yesterday, this is a clean shirt, washed yesterday, and already I'm soaked up the back. And it's only like 8.30 in the morning. I don't know what the temperature is going to today. We're not talking about 38, 40, 42 degrees. It'll be 33, 4 or something like that, but it's sticky and muggy. Running sheet music over international boundaries. Yep, I was indeed, and I was copped. <laughs> That's it. Thinking about the audit is making me sweat. Is that it? I don't think so. It's this room. I didn't put the air conditioner on. You know, I don't like doing it when I'm just here by myself. You know, the staff's going to get here and bang, they're going to hit the button and turn it all on. But uh, I really don't like doing it when it's just me in the room. You know, it's a massive air conditioner. I don't know how much energy it uses. And it's, it's fair enough for the shop and many staff and the customers we use it. We're following the, the, de the, the guidelines by the City Hall. We talked about this before. Some months back at the beginning of the hot season, I was having trouble and stress with some of the staff members who really wanted to turn it colder. I didn't want it that cold. We argued back and forth. So we, we went to the guidelines by City Hall, which say shops and offices set to 28 degrees. And actually setting it to 28 meant like it didn't really have any effect, so the room was still stunningly sweaty. So we, we ended up sort of compromising. They wanted it at 22 and 23. I couldn't bear that. It was iceberg territory. So we've been using 26 or so as a setting in the shop here. And I think upstairs they're, they're following the guidelines and using 28. And there's another guideline too, part of the guideline package, it said for shops and, and, and offices, and I guess, I don't know if it was restaurants too, it may be lower, I don't know. Shops and offices says 28, and it also said turn it off a half an hour before closing time. The theory being that during that half an hour, once you turn it off, so you've, you've got zero energy costs now for the last half an hour, and the temperature only bit by bit by bit starts to change. So your customers won't notice, your staff won't notice, but you've saved a half an hour of energy costs. But I can't get these guys to do that. The shop manager, he's, she's like, no way. It just after a few minutes, it's already too hot. So whatever, there's, there's things we can fight about. There's hills to die on and there's stuff to just, you know, just to delegate and let other people do. I can't save the world by myself, blah, 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 whatever. Pick your battles. But I, at the other end of the day, here, where I'm here by myself, I don't turn it on. And unless I do. <laughs> okay, we've got another one now. There's a stamp in the way, so we're just gonna, we're gonna get our machete and, and go through the forest here, randomly. Don't need to worry too much. I think just, just simply keep it wiggling, make thin spots, make thick spots, just keep a flow. Get to the other side, out she comes. I think we'll be okay. There's no way it's going to match the one that I made before. Whatever I did, that one is, uh, that one is this one, and that one is this one. I see I was really conservative before. I kept it clean and simple. 
Hey, interesting. In retrospect, now that should have been a wider cut. Look at that. Someone says you keep your apartment at what would be 21. That's like living in a glacier. You can't do that. It's remember we're in and out, in and out, in and out. If you're in there all day long, not changing, it's one thing. But this is a room where people are coming in and out, in and out, and people are coming in. Customers come in from a hot outside, 33, 35, 37, whatever it got to be. If they come into a 22 room, the shop, it's no way. It's unbearable. Absolutely unbearable. So that's our problem. It's got to be uh, acceptable to the customers who just come in and to the staff who are here in the room all day long. And too cold down to 22, 23 does not work. The customers just come in and they're shocked. It's not acceptable. And there's shops around here. Oh my God, I don't want to admit to this while well, you've been here. Some of the, uh, what do you call them? The, the uh, drugstore type shops that sell uh, uh, cosmetics and stuff like this. They've got a big wide frontage. There's one around the corner from here called Fukutaro. It's got a wide frontage, the, the maybe three, four times as wide as us, and it has no doors. They, they open the doors all off, all year long, summer and winter. There's no front doors during business hours. And in winter, they blast heaters to fill the room, and in summer, they blast the air conditioner. You can feel the blast as you walk into the thing, because the air conditioning heater things are mounted in a strip above the doors, and they blast straight down. There's little flags that are fluttering. So in summer, you come from a 37 outside, you walk under this blast and inside is cold, but the doors are open. Those machines are just blowing cold air out into the street all day long. And in winter they do it the other way around. They blow hot air all day long. And I walk by there and I think, my God, my God, my God, just, just to try and attract more customers, just to get more money, they are doing this, you know, and the rest of us are trying to turn things down and be cool about this and like... <laughs> Anyway, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Is it grumpy Dave today? I don't think so. I'm quite happy, actually. I've had a really peaceful few days. I had a day off Tuesday. I went to Ome. Very, very peaceful, light day. Got my hair cut, relaxed for the rest of the day. Came back on a Wednesday really, really, really late. Didn't get back till Wednesday around noon. So I played hooky for most of a day. Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. So I'm happy, peaceful. Had a real nice dinner. Also, too, while I was out in Ome, this is really not much uh, related to, to our Twitch chats here, because you guys don't see the Ome life very much. We have two uh, regular members now in Ome out there. One of them, Ishigami-san, she's been with us for, my God, 10, 11 years. I don't know. We're, we go back along, me and her. And another lady, Nishiyama-san, she came a, a year and a half or two years ago. But the volume of shipping that we're doing and the volume of shipping coming up for the coming season autumn and uh, winter gift season etc is looking pretty uh, heavy and those two ladies perhaps are not going to be able to cover it by themselves there's lots and lots of work to do so one of my jobs out there in recent trips to Ome has been to scout around the neighborhood talk to the lady who cuts my hair and ask her hey do you know of any ladies looking for work or something nearby around here and uh, a Sometime in the summer when I went there, she said, yeah, how about such and such a lady? And we went to talk to her. She came over and talked to us, and it was looking okay, but she got nervous and decided not to, uh, not to think about joining us because she can't read a word of, uh, she calls it yokomoji. This lady says, and I, I first didn't get what she's talking about. We're speaking in Japanese, and the lady's here looking at our work and our systems and stuff like this. And at one point, she came up with, yeah, just yokomoji yomenai inde. And I'm like, it took me a minute. It took me a minute to figure out what she's talking about. Sideways lettering. She doesn't understand sideways lettering. Yoko, sideways, moji, letters. And I, she just meant, she meant like English, you know, whatever, what we're, what we're using here. 
because all the prints, the packing, the labels were there in English and the, the, the shipping lists, whatever, come out with the print titles and whatever. And this lady was whatever, getting on from my age, whatever. So she, this was a few, you know, a few months ago. She said, yeah, no, no, I don't think I can handle this. And also it required her being able to learn how to log on to our computer, print out the invoices, match them up with prints and, you know, take it to the post office, this kind of stuff. It's not rocket science, but if you don't have, if you're afraid of computers, and if, like she said, yoko moji yomenai, then maybe she wouldn't have been the best person for the job. This was a few months ago. So I didn't spend much time thinking about this, worrying about it, but now here we are in the middle of September, and the autumn rush is going to be upon us any minute now, any minute now. So when I was out there getting my hair cut yesterday, I chatted again with Abisan. I know, hey, remember a couple of months ago? And she says, yeah, yeah. Did you find somebody yet? And I'm like, no, of course I didn't find anybody. You, how do you know? You know everything goes on in this town. <laughs> you didn't hear about this. So, so she and I, as she's chopping my hair, instead of talking about the weather, and it's really hot today, isn't it? Instead of talking about that stuff, she went through her list of who in the neighborhood could perhaps, you know, be suitable for working for us. And when I left, I paid her the money for the haircut. She says, you know, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll think about this. I'll think about this, you know. And I said, okay, well, whatever, don't sweat it. But, uh, you know, any leads you get, or if you can just think of somebody, you know, maybe they shouldn't be quite as elderly as that lady we talked about before because th that lady was a bit scared of computers and stuff, you know. And I, I outlined for her really well what we need. We don't need a computer whiz. We just need somebody who can, you know, look at a screen and, and read stuff on a computer and who, who could, you know, think about packaging prints, whatever, you know. This, as I said, it's not rocket science, not speaking sarcastically in any way. Anyway, I left, whatever, whatever, whatever. I go back to the Omi workshop and less than five minutes later, there's ping pong knock on the door. I'm downstairs in the second basement. I come up to the, to the door and there's Abisan, the haircut lady, together with another lady. And she, after I left, she'd said, I know, maybe. And she'd gone over to that woman's house, banged on the door, talked to her, explained what she knew about my situation. And I guess the two of them then decided, shit, whatever, let's go talk to Dave. So they came over right there, not five minutes after I had my hair cut. They came over and talked. Long story short. We chat there at the door for a few minutes. This lady seems, she's, she's you know, half my age. She's got a child in elementary school. So she's stuck. She doesn't want to go get a full-time job because her kid comes home from school. She's the kind of mother that wants to be there when her children come home from school, which I am 1,000% on board with. I wouldn't even dream of, of uh, any other way of doing this. So she would love to have some kind of work where she is not going to be told to go to the supermarket, check out and do your shift on Thursday. No, you got to stay late till six. My kid's coming home, stay late till six. We don't roll this way. So that was her first concern. Can she be at home when her kid comes home from school? And I said, lady, the people here have their own keys. They do what they want, when they want. The job is there. And even she lives literally, 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 she lives across the street, two houses down. I didn't know her because she's moved in about eight years ago since I actually basically left Ome. So she's a neighbor that I don't know myself. Long story short, we go downstairs to talk to Ishigami-san. 30 seconds later, these guys are best buddies. They have the same piano teacher. And that's it. That's it. My problems at that point just dissolved. This lady lives across the street. She needs part-time work. She wants to do it on a flexible schedule, and our current staff and her have the same piano teacher. I just left the room. They just... <laughs> <laughs> so they're talking away and talking about the piano concert that was just happening a while ago, and they're already best friends. They've never met each other, but they had one of them... The lady had heard of Ishigami-san. Ishigami-san didn't know this lady. But no matter. It's, it's done. It's cooked. So they're chatting and me and Abisan stand aside for a minute. And Abisan, she, she, this is a joke, 100% this is a joke, but there's a reading behind it. She said, hmm, that was a good introduction, wasn't it? Like, she, she winks at me. Because here in Japan, 
the person who makes the introductions, whether it's for a marriage, nako o san, or whether it's for a business relationship or whatever, the person that makes introductions is really, really, really in a special position. If things go wrong, they're on the hot seat. I mean, literally, if a marriage starts to break up, the person that in helped introduce those two kids is called in. It's really, really, really a big deal. Now, she didn't say, <laughs> like this, but I forget what word she said. I didn't understand it at first. <laughs> Good introduction. And I, she, I don't think she did eyebrows. She doesn't do eyebrows. But the point being, she looked at me and I looked at her and I said, I'm on this, I'm on this. So we, I could do it from here. We could send her something, but that would be a little bit informal. Next time I go for a haircut, I will have a little bag with me. <laughs> And we will take care. We will take care of her. We will take care. It's the way, of course. It's common sense. It's common sense. If I didn't do anything for her, she would not say anything, but she would be a tad disappointed. And actually, she would, it's, it's the gaijin. I've got the gaijin sex. She would say, Dave's a foreigner, and even after all these years in Japan, he still doesn't quite get the nuance. If I didn't take her a present, you know, she would think. He still doesn't quite get the nuances here, so. But I do, I do, I do. I do get the nuances, and we will, uh, I have to think about what to do. If I took her, uh, if I did this with a bottle, which is very, very possible, it probably not much of it would end up with her. Her husband would say, uh, hey, thank you very much, you know. So it's gotta be something that would be really nice and useful for her. She's nearly my age. You don't buy them stuff. Nobody wants stuff for her house. It's got to be edibles. Edibles, something from a Saksa, whatever. And it's got to be a little bit upscale. And it wouldn't be, we wouldn't do the, the $200 melon or something because there's completely, completely no point in that. It's not a question of, how much value you brought to the transaction here. You know, it's a, a question of friendship. So it should be something useful, not cheap, but not grotesquely expensive. No, of course not. That would, that, that would put her in a, in a bad situation. If it was too expensive, like a $200 melon or something, she'd think, oh shit, he's gone too far. Now what am I going to do? I need to give him a discount on his next haircut, stuff like that. It would go round and round and round. So no, it's just got to be a nice present, but not things. She doesn't want stuff for her house. Korean hot dogs, chocolate eggs, chocolate eggs, whatever. I'll think of something. It should also be a saksa relevant. So maybe I'll do some nice, uh, nice goodies from a saksa. We'll see. Okay, we've warmed up with the ripples. We've gone around the outside. You know what's next. I've got to cut the lines of the body here. It looks easy. It looks straightforward, but uh, you've got to be really careful, you know. Not just curves. Curves in general, you've got to get a good... What's the word? What's the word that you know, people do when, they, when they're making furniture or making a boat or something? You've got to get the curve look nice. If the curve, you know, what's it called? I don't know. I've forgotten the word, I don't know, when you're trying to make a curve, fairing, fairing, I think, fairing, right? You fair a curve so it looks nice. And I've got to do the same thing here, fairing. And I've got to do the same thing here, but it's double trouble because this is a, a, a human body. And if the fairing or if the curve is just a little bit off, people will think, you know, my God, she has such tough shoulders, it doesn't look like a nice young lady. You could actually even argue that the previous one didn't actually do this that well, now that I think about it, because I just followed the original design. But the, the, her arm here, the fairing on her arm, I think, now that we analyze it, is really not done very well. The angle coming into her elbow and going out. If I were this designer, if I were his art teacher, I think I'd send him back to the model class. There's a model there. Go and draw her a bit more carefully. So basically, whatever, I'm going to follow the, uh, the master copy the same as before, because there's no way. If I try and fix that arm, it's going to be a disaster. So I can't do that. But I have to be careful with the knife to make sure I get 
you know, I get the curves without any anomalies or whatever. And it's always more difficult on a human body. Your eyes just catch any, any irregularity. Maybe boat builders, I think these guys are really, really, really hip to this. All the angles, when you look at a boat from the front or the side or the top, whatever, it's got to be fair in every direction. It's the job from hell, unless you're in love with it. And actually, you know, when you think about it, uh, the, the prints I've made over the years, you know, I started that Poets series back in 1989 and did it for 10 years. And if there is sort of, if you could try and analyze how is it that I ended up being a good carver over my career, I think a good part of it, you could, you could make the analysis that because the project I started with involved Japanese calligraphy, I had to learn how to make the calligraphy fair. And it's, it's really, really the same thing. Calligraphy, it's not all a smooth, simple line. Some of it is dramatic and bold and goes back and forth and splashes. But every single part of every stroke has to be fair in that sense of, you know, the shape of, of that boat. And at the beginning, at first, I was God awful at it. The first print in that series that I issued, Tenji Tenno. Butter, I don't want to talk about it too much. By the second one, I was getting the hang of it. The second one was quite decent, and then I really picked it up, and Dave locked into that, and he, he understood this. And I was able to make the calligraphy fair. And after a couple of years, there were still orders for the first prints, so I went back to the block for the first print. I couldn't bear it. Cut off the calligraphy and put the calligraphy for the first print on a separate block because it was so poorly carved, it was a blot on the series. And now I guess when you see the whole series of 100 prints, the first group, the first three, four, five, six, you can probably see progression in how the fairing comes, comes smooth, you know. And when I see sometimes now some foreigners who are trying to make prints in the Japanese style, a couple of people in Britain and other people who are doing this, they're also sometimes carving calligraphy, and that's where we separate whatever, whatever, whatever. That's where it really, really shows. And it's, yeah, if you can design boats and build boats, then you could probably carve Japanese calligraphy. But if you don't get it shaping a hull, then you're not going to get it with calligraphy either. You know, I never thought of it in terms of that analogy before. How's our time? 8.48, we're about halfway through. Etone. We have, of course, a show-and-tell. We have the show-and-tell that I had prepared the other day when we were doing sizing upstairs. And uh, luckily, I think, we didn't get a chance to show it because I was looking at it again this morning before getting ready for this stream. And this is astonishing material. The thing we're going to look at today in show-and-tell is astonishing. We have seen it. Just, we've seen it. One day, two, three, four years ago, whatever, it arrived from an auction package. I opened it, we looked at it, oh, that's cool, that's cool, everybody's socks were blown off, and we put it away, and that was that. But I hadn't known what it was, I didn't know much about it, didn't know the background. I had just opened it and said, yeah, this looks nice. Wow, isn't this really nice? And we put it away. We've learned more about it. We're getting ready to put this into the collection, so we've, we've uh, learned more about this thing. And whatever, you can forget socks for the rest of your existence. We're going to look at it today a bit more carefully, now with knowledge of what we are actually seeing and what we are, what we are looking at. So that's going to be today's show and tell. So we may actually start that a little bit earlier because it's going to take a bit more than 15 minutes, maybe whatever, 20 minutes show and tell. We'll see, whatever, I don't know.
What are we doing? What are we taking up one stop? I think he wanted to show his original block for the. Oh, we did. I was going to show you the block for this one. I don't know where it is. It's on a, in Ome? No. It's in. It's upstairs on the third floor somewhere in a box. Yeah, you're right. I should have hunted it up. Whatever. We're not going to be finished this today because there's no way I'm going to get all the clearing done. Send me a message or something. How can I remember? Send me a message or something off time and I will get the block ready, bring it down to my desk, ready for the next stream. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did, I did, I don't know if I promised that, but I did talk about it, but yes, sorry about that. Blame it on the tax guys, you know, they've kind of blown a lot of things out of my mind the last couple of days. Then on top of this, we talked about this, I think, last week. Did I mention it, that the post office changes? As of October 1st, the post office has a new rate sheet, which would be simple in, in and of itself. Just they put the prices up. That's no problem. During that night, when the new rates go into effect, we put the new numbers into our database. We're up and running. Unfortunately, it's not that simple because they are making massive changes behind the scenes. The post office has changed their zones. What I mean is they've broken the world up. They had previously broken the world up into four zones. What was it? It was, it was North America was one zone. South America, Africa was another zone. Europe, Middle East was one zone. Asia was the fourth zone. Everything except Japan had been broken up into four zones. So our shopping cart works on this. Customers put in their country code, whatever, and bingo, we know what zone they're in and we charge the relevant postage in our shopping cart. They have now announced that as of October 1st, the world is broken up into not those four zones, but they've got a new five zone system in place. And this change is going into effect at midnight, September 30th. So it's not just a question of me plugging in the rates into my spreadsheet. I have to rebuild the shopping cart to understand the zones. That's easy enough. But our customer database has the old zones. And October 1st, we will do subscription billing. We're going to send bills, invoices, to all the people who have our sub subscribers to a certain print. Now we are going to hold the rates on them because when somebody starts a subscription with us, we promise to hold the price steady for the year of their subscription. And probably in the fine print, I didn't write, we promised to hold the print price and postage size steady for the subscription. I probably didn't write that, but we're going to do that. We don't want anybody to be hit with a bigger bill than they expected during the course of a subscription. So any current subscriber, we're going to keep charging them at the old postage rates. Now that's doable. I'd simply I keep a double copy of the rate sheet in the database. That customer is queued to use the rate sheet before October 1st. New customers get the rate sheet from October 1st. That's easy. But the zones are changing. So an old customer in zone 2 who was getting charged $3, but now he's been moved to zone 3 by the post office, and the old rate sheet for zone three, ah, just, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute, absolute, absolute nightmare. And this is happening October 1st. And we just learned about this. They sent us the pamphlet. We knew a new rate sheet was coming, but we didn't know they were changing the zones. And everything's going up considerably. And if you were in the U of S of A, as I said, subscribers don't sweat it because we are going to do what we can. Well, we're going to keep the subscription postage prices the same. If I can physically figure out how to do it. Okay. Talk about this. The mailman's here. No more. Talk about it. Oh, good, 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 good. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. No more. Thank you. It's the mailman a delivery from Kubota-san. Now we knew this was coming because I just talked about you. Kubota-san is starting a new job yesterday. 
you know, the color colors on the KJ5. So this is his old one. Too many things to do today. Shall we open it and peek at it? Ho, 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 ho. These are not the tests from Kubota-san. He got the test yesterday. It can't be here in the mail yet. The guy is good, but he is not Superman. This is his previous job, the one that he was finishing up. The reason that I sent him the new job, he was finishing the old one. And here it is. And you know what's happening. Ome, our Ome shipping staff is waiting for this. They know this is coming. Kubota-san stuff, is it coming Wednesday? And I told them, no, it'll be here on Thursday. They said, good, yeah, we'll get ready for shipping Thursday. And I said, I have bad news for you. Kubota-san doesn't do his own name embossing. I have to do the name embossing. So this is one more job for me today. This package of prints, they're all going to be beautiful prints, but they won't have his name on them. So I've got to get one of our plates. You've seen them before, you know how it works. I've got to get one of the plates and put Kubota-san's name on these damn things. And there's a, like 130 plates in the package. So. Welcome to Moko Hong Kong. Welcome to Moko Hong Kong. Someone says, I'll be in Japan next week. Hopefully I don't break the bank at Moko Hong Kong. It's not my bank that gets broken, it's yours, buddy. <laughs> so. Looking forward to seeing you here tomorrow, next week. What's happening next week? The audit is happening the week after that. I can tell you now, if you're coming to date October 4th and 5th, that's interesting. The audit is happening October 4th and 5th. We're going to do it upstairs in the office area. We're going to get a new table in, chairs and tables, PowerPoints for the computers. They've given us a list of stuff to do. We have to supply, you know, the table and electricity for their computers and stuff. And I'll be up there October 4th and 5th. So if you happen to be dropping in the shop October 4th and 5th, am I going to be available? I don't know. I'm upstairs in the middle of an audit. So if staff comes up upstairs and says, David, there's a, there's a fan here to see you. I'll say to the tax guy, oh, excuse me, something more important has come up. I got to go downstairs and spend an hour with a fan. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Or do I want to do that? Or that's my good excuse for getting out of the audit. I don't know. <laughs> The audit is scheduled for October 4th and 5th. So maybe if you're planning to come by here and if you really want to have a little chat, probably it's best to avoid one of those two days. I don't have any idea how this is going to go. But that also brings up something else, you know, uh, another topic. I think we touched on it a little bit a while back. We did. We talked about Stan Lee at the uh, at the convention he was at. You know, the famous comic designer, illustrator Stan Lee, who now has not put pen to paper for years because it's fan service. He just goes to conventions and stuff like this. And every day the shop is open. You know, I am down here, even upstairs. Yesterday I was upstairs. I got called, not yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I got called downstairs once, twice. I got called down twice. And when I was down here more, another customer dropped in. Let's take some pictures. And I really don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do that because uh, it's killing my work time. Absolutely killing my work time. So I don't know what to say. I want to be friendly. I want to be open. But how much longer can we make ourselves completely and openly available? I don't know. Now, it's an unknown quantity here. This is the black block and the underneath watercolor is not visible through the black because the black here is going to be printed very heavy and very hard. So I'm going to take this block and I'm going to go outside the line a little bit here to make sure that none of the water shows under the black here. Oh, it's nine o'clock. 
It's nine o'clock, is it? Oh, oh bing! Yeah. Two Ooh, seconds right. early. Click a, I, I jumped on the floor. Excuse me. I was trying to show a, a Jushiban. I dropped it. Come on okay. in, come on in, come on in. I know three, four, five minutes ago, package from the post office. It's Kubota-san. It's HRO2, Two. which only. Uh, yes, we can yes. ship it today if you can go mm -hmm. through it. I've got a, there's no Jushi. Okay. So I think so. This is the the uh, yeah, the next the next wave. wave. Yeah, it's wave. the next it's, wave. Yeah. So 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 so. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Business, business. Ayano san, how are Hi. you? Hi. For those of you who don't know, this is the lady who works upstairs. This is our customer service agent. Did we decide? Is that your name? I don't customer know. Customer service person. Is person representative. Just person. No, no, just person. <laughs> okay, whatever. I didn't yeah, think agent yeah, was an it was an insult. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, look sorry. at this. We're full of this. Good morning, Queen o Washi Queen Ayano San. Yeah, You're never, never gonna live that down. <laughs> you were always. Yeah, Antonio, yeah, they were they were so nice. They were helping my left side and yeah, they were helping yeah, my right, yeah, right side. Yeah. And yeah, I wasn't really doing it myself. No, so. but you're never going to, that will never, it's always going to be with you. The Washi Queen Ayano san. So yeah. I should update, I've started to do the editing on that stream for YouTube. Oh, you started? I started, I mean, what can I say? My God, if I had a free day with nothing else to do, I might be able to get it done. But at the moment I've started, I pulled it into to a Final Cut Pro. I started doing some subtitles. They're going to take a long time because there's a lot of ah, time. Every right. time we start going shook, 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 it wipes out what he said. So the subtitle job is going to be days and days oh, and days okay. of I subtitles. I thought it was going to be easier because you already have that data, like in the other videos, uh, and you just need to... I've got to translate it. It's all in Japanese. I've translated it. So the core of the core of the video will stay. i got to color balance it and stuff like that and right. do the sound editing. But it's going to need subtitles. Right. And maybe subtitles. somebody, maybe, I know, somebody can perhaps <laughs> help me with this. Subtitles is not, something mm. that I'm not good at translating. I, I don't really, you don't really translate to like a Japanese into English or, you know, vice versa when you are talking and, you know, to a different language. So, right? Okay, so we're, at the moment we're speaking English and right. I'm really thinking English. But, Moshi Nihongo de Hanasto, Boko Ego no Honyaku Janai, Hontani Chanto Nihongo Hanastimasu. So, I am some more. So, so, when it comes to like a translation or interpretation, mm. it's difficult because like we don't really like translate it in our head. Well, no, but you can. Yeah, but like. Yeah. Just me, just me, though. The, the guy said, please dip deeper. He said in Japanese, we can translate that into English, phrase by phrase. It's not complicated. It's going to be like a direct, like a straight, very uh, formal Japanese. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, what she's getting at here, the I question of subtitles on that video. Remember, we had a situation there where Ayano san was a customer and the other guy was the was shop person. So he. In general, he was pretty cool, you know. He didn't speak to you in an overly formal way. He mm. spoke to you pretty casually. Right. So but what, what her point was about subtitle translations is... Uh, English, yeah, we're into English. It's okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. We don't have to, you know... If he said, de gozaimas, <laughs> we, we don't have to put that into the English nuance, you know. And remember, two people can see what's going on. Uh, she's overemphasizing the, the difficulty of this, you know. I agree, doing subtitles in a movie can sometimes be extremely difficult because there's lots of, in many movies, there's colloquial language, there's rough yeah. language. And like when somebody in English movie swears, how do you put that into Japanese? Oh my God, mm -hmm. you know. So I get it. Movie subtitling can be a real bag of worms. When it comes to jokes, like, you know, when people start making jokes, like in the movie, it's difficult mm. to translate. Mm. Like, I, I mm. don't know how to do mm. it. Mm. And jokes kind of... Their sense of humor differs from country to country. Gotcha. So it's you know, hugely, it's like translating a novel. Mm. But my God, the washi making experience. <laughs> so, I, I don't so think <laughs> this is not Nobel literature level Did of complexity. Make a so, joke? I, I don't, don't know. think so. <laughs> I kind of think we'll be able to handle this. And even if, okay, even if it comes up, there's a phrase where I think, my God, how am I going to put into English what this guy said? It doesn't matter, like <laughs> skip it or something. So I don't know. You know. So we can overthink this. So, so. Okay, okay. So I'm overthinking this now. Okay, anyway, I didn't realize that, but it might be that you, you guys, well, you're busy too, so I don't know, whatever. Anyway, anyway, it is moving forward. I did do the first steps of video editing for the paper making stream. And the idea is to put that up to YouTube pretty, pretty soon. Because getting the next real YouTube video ready, oh my god, I have no idea now what to do about that. But. 
I had a plan. I've always got a plan, and then the bookkeeping comes into it, and now the audit is here. I got to do the preparation for the audit, and then everything else. So anyway, not to yeah. complain. Yeah. Not to complain. Not to complain. Yeah, let's be optimistic. Stop, 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 stop. The next video is coming soon. Yeah. yeah. Your plan. You were off. You were off yesterday, so I, there's not a whole lot. I didn't so touch your inbox. You know. I, I don't. It yep. Looks pretty calm. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I see. There's 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 a there's orders. And then there's a request for print parties, as of course. Yep, and I yep. see in your box there's two or three requests for when can I come and talk to Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I see so that. we were chatting about this in the stream just now. You know, these are the, they're now coming in in the inbox. And I normally don't see Ayano San's inbox day by day by day. But yesterday, because she was off, I parsed the inbox to make sure if there's anything we needed to answer right now. You know, right now I can have a print party this afternoon, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And in the box yesterday, there were two people who said they want to come and talk to me. And will I be there on November the 29th this or something like this, you know? And I don't know yeah. if I'll be here on November 29th. And mm. Please just tell them I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I normally tell them, like, yeah. I'll quickly drop another note, you know, close yeah, to the, yeah, the day yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, arrive. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I don't know. This is getting now. It's starting to get kind of a lot. So I don't know what to do. So. Anyway, enough of that. Sure. Enough of that. So, so, so. No, immigration bureau ni ikimashita kara. Hopefully he get a notice from them like in two weeks or something and then we could go back and get, you know. Okay, is that something you can share here? They don't know what you're talking about or is that? Uh, it's not a secret, but okay. It, it, Okay, they're chewing through it. Aim san is married to Taran san, our, our, can we say, our new young carver, whatever, the young carver from Britain. And uh, as part of being married, visa status and stuff changes, and there's a ton of paperwork to chew through. It turns out that it's different from back in my day. I got married in Japan at City Hall at like 12 o'clock. We went to the immigration office at 3 o'clock. They stamped it. We came home, and that was it. It was all done. Bang, bang, a few minutes work on one day. This is back in 1986, whatever. These days, it seems, immigration is a little, they want a lot more paperwork. Yeah. Really? Why are you getting married? It couldn't be just for the sake of a visa, could it? You know, this kind of stuff, whatever. I don't even yeah, know the background. Yeah. You know. And they want to they want to check not just Taran, but you know if I'm a, I'm a reliable Legit. person. So you you're know. not a bar hostess, you know. This I mean, is, this, this is the deal. There is this thing that the people are scamming immigration all the time, fake marriage for the bar hostess to get an immigration so somebody can you know whatever. Right. So these guys do those guys do have to deal with shit like that all the time. A normal couple like this is not in that situation, but they still have to go through yeah. all the hoops. So. But I thought we will stay like stay there for like five, six hours, just waiting in the line. Mm -hmm. But things have changed. It's the number like, deal. Yeah, of course. You, yeah. you get a number but when you they, go in the building, sure. Well, they have a booking system mm -hmm. now, only at Shinagawa Bureau. Online? Online. Before you go? Before I go. Wow! So I booked nine o'clock, you know, slot. Um, wow! Yeah, like three days before, three days in advance. And then we went there. We arrived like 10 minutes before mm -hmm. nine. Mm -hmm. And then they called us, you know, before before the time. No slot. way! And then, you know, we submitted the paper, they went through, and because I prepared it really well, yep. you know, there was no yep. missing yep. paper. You're pros so at this, yeah. So accepted it, and then we uh, finished no it in five minutes. No way! Five minutes. No way! No way, right? Last the time. hours and hours and hours I've spent in those offices back yeah. in 1979 and yeah. 86. There's and no such like reservation system. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you come back to work then? <laughs> why? She took the whole day off to do this. Free kid is Free kid. And national holiday, not free kid is She was thinking, can I really tell him this story? <laughs> <laughs> One of the national holidays this month falls into Saturday, so I'm going to use that yeah, Saturday yeah. holiday to... Oh, really whatever, I, I don't get involved. I don't get involved. But these guys take care of their own timesheets. I understand is a, a full-time booked employee, contract employee. So she's obviously, she works normally five days a week, two off, five days a week, two off. She has her own, what is it? It's 10 days a year or 11. It's 10 days a year. I think it's 10 days. Your, yeah. your company grants a holiday, so she takes 10 days a year off. For us, but every national holiday, of course, is also a holiday. When the national holiday falls on a day that Anasan's working, she doesn't come in. Next Monday, I think, is a. Next Monday is a national holiday. Yep. We will have another national holiday, which is. Uh, on Saturday or Saturday, something. Yeah. So she shifts to Friday, takes the Friday off, or adds it in somewhere else, whatever. These guys keep track of this. I get a bit surprised because there really are kind of a lot of national holidays here in Japan. There's at least 12, like one every month, but they don't come every month. Right. I frequently go upstairs. Yesterday, uh, I was in the office upstairs. Where's Watanabe-san? Oh, she's uh, not here today. Like, I'm like, why is she not here? And it's because she's switched off for the holiday that's coming up next Saturday and stuff. You know, so. 
All these employees, they want these days off. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm <laughs> laughing at you. <laughs> I'm laughing at you. you know? No, no, we, we've set our ground rules here. People try and go home at closing time and they take all their holidays. We're trying to make it happen. And so far, with people like Anasan, they're on board with this completely, of course. You know? We're trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Healthy you know, environment. I know, of course, of course, of course. But we're living in a culture where nobody else is doing this. So it sometimes sounds a bit strange. Even to me, I've been here all these years. Where's one Well, Actually, Dave, it's a holiday today. Well, so does God. I've been, I've been here. I've been here too long. <laughs> so. Yeah, the area I went yesterday, Shinagawa area, yeah. isn't it? Close to Tendozaru. That area is like where my former head office is. Oh, the it, wedding company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I don't like this. Bad vibes, this bad is vibes. Where I used yeah, to yeah, work yeah, until yeah. like 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So yeah. this is to, where there's sort of, to break this down, we've got sort of roughly two kinds of employees here. Employees like Anusan who have had experience working with a Japanese company. Now, it's not necessarily a horrible black company, but it was a typical Japanese company. Mm -hmm. So there was always a certain amount of work time involved, and there was always a certain amount of, you're not going home at 5.30. I mean, this is just, yeah. just the way it is, even with a non-black company. So for Anusan to come here, if I want to exaggerate it, she's died and gone to heaven because, you know, whatever. But my point is, she gets what we're trying to do because she's seen the other side. But we've also got a couple of employees here who never had the experience of working for a Japanese company. So they think what we're doing is sort of, that's just the way companies work. And we, there's something they see a bit strict here. They're thinking, geez, Dave's strict. Why is he so noisy about this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel a bit sad about this because they don't know what it's like outside on the other side of that door. You yeah, know, much healthier you know, this year. Yeah, yeah, and they don't know that. So for me, it's much easier with someone like Ayano san, who has, again, again, it wasn't that much of a black company you worked for. Well, it, well, well okay, whatever, was, yeah, I, whatever. Really, I, yeah, you don't. Yeah, I don't want to talk about. Okay, it. Okay, yeah, okay, it's really bad. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that bad because I mean, how many karoshi deaths were there? There, I mean, some companies are really. Really, really I've bad. seen some you know. people got depression and yeah, stuff yeah, left, okay. so... Whatever, yeah. Yeah, we don't need Anyways, to go there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Monday is my holiday. Masuka. Soka, soka. The holiday in Monday is my holiday. It's your holiday. What's the holiday on Monday? She doesn't even know what the holiday on Monday is. Do you know okay, what it is? Know yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How should I describe that? How, respect... Uh... It, in English, it's called respect for the... Aged, and I'm not quite sure I like that translation. Is that the way it says on, on the official translation? Is respect for the aged? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it means literally like senior citizen, right? 65. What's the definition in Japan? 65? 60? 60. It must 65, Japan. 65. Well, but that expression, you know, ke, keido, no keido. Keido as a word means what? Elderly? Is there a date cut off for the word keido? Keido, keido kanji, ke means like respect. Yes. Yeah. But. So. We are out, isn't it? Aye, but the, the, elderly. Yeah, but it, it, there's not in the word itself. There's no date cut off. No, no. In our social security system, there is, but it yeah. just means I would have put elderly. Respect for the elderly. Respect <laughs> for the aged. Respect for our superiors. We can't do that anymore. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so someone's saying, would I rather be an elder? Elder. Respect okay. for your elders. But that means the younger ones here respect <laughs> you. That does. <laughs> I gotta respect all of the people in the company almost. <laughs> so I was saying in Japan, I think it means people over 80. So I don't count yet, maybe. I don't know. I might have, like, respect my Oji-chan, Oba-chan, you know, grandparents. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think we're at show and tell time. I see what's in No, it's okay. It's okay. I, too long. I, yeah. okay. Actually, I'm okay with this because the work I was doing right now, it's carving the shape of her body. And we talked about this, keeping the lines, you know, human-shaped lines are different from normal lines. Because if it's a bit funny, the, the human shape looks funny. It's like facial expressions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, and I'm doing this while chatting, and I'm thinking, I'm doing this while I'm chatting, but I would really rather not be chatting while I'm doing this. Okay. So maybe I've been talking a bit too much, putting my knife down, and now I have my real excuse. I can put this away, <laughs> come back tonight and carve this, and it's now, it's, it socks off. Show and tell time. Absolute socks off. Show and tell. Time. Okay, she's going to escape. She's going to go upstairs. Let me clear the decks. This is a 
little bit of a large book. Let me clear my decks. And let me get rid of the flask. One sec. John's talking about you might want to give her less of a divot in her elbow. Boy, I don't know, John, if I want to start. Uh... Yeah, I, I see your point, but I'm not sure if I want to start changing this because, my God, my judgment, as opposed to the original artist's judgment. <clears throat> okay, we're not going anywhere. Relax. We're just going to get our flask here out of the way. What do you think on our hanging tool? How much longer do you think this is going to go before it drops off one day? <laughs> and I don't know, do I need this or do I not need this? We want to look at the... Let's, let's take this out of the way for a minute. Let's see what happens. We may come back to it, but for the moment, let's, let's take this out of the way and try without this and then see how this goes. I don't know. It might not work. Whatever. Get my oil out of the way. That's the last thing I want on these prints. Okay. We have an album of Meiji era prints. As I said, we did see this album before when I got it from Yahoo Auctions a few years ago at a very, very aggressive price. The lettering has become unreadable. It was printed in black type on silver paper. And this was made in Meiji 29. Can our bot handle this? Meiji, John's already ready, Meiji. Meiji 29 is the date. And printing on silver paper in Meiji 29 means it has now become, of course, completely black. So we can't read the title here. 1896, we got it. The title is Cha no Yu Nichi Nichi So. And we have an album of woodblock prints. And luckily for us, it's not one of those albums that's folded in half so the prints got folded. This album, all the prints are smooth and flat. We have an album of designs by Mizuno Toshikata, made in 1890, whatever it was, 1896. And it's a full set of the most glorious set of prints that Toshikata ever designed. I think we might need this light back here. Let's try and put this back. Just let's see what happens, because I want... Okay, I think that might be better. Let's see if we leave it there, see what happens. This is the title page. And what we're going to see over the next few minutes is this. The album of prints has a theme. I said cha no yu, nichi nichi so. Cha no yu, of course, the Japanese tea, tea ceremony. And nichi nichi is day, day, day by day or a full day. We are going to see one day in the life of, of, a, of a tea ceremony. We're going to visit the house of a very, 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 very upscale woman who has full tea ceremony set up in her garden, a tea house, etc., etc., and she's going to be visited by a few ladies. They come in the early morning and they work through bits and bits of the tea ceremony and have and leave in the evening. We're going to see one day at the tea ceremony. There are 15 prints, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus this beautifully, beautifully carved and printed table of contents. Now, I want to show you details here, but I have to be careful. The album is held together by the paper that makes the prints, so I can't actually goo 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 goo, goo and mix this around. You've got to be really, really really careful with this. So I'm going to be limited in the way that I can actually manipulate this and throw this around to you. So zooming in is going to be just pretty much zooming in as we sit here. I can then move around a little bit some of the action here. Everything you see in this entire album from here to the end of today's stream is carved and printed in the woodblock format. Every color you see, every shape you see, every gradation is printed in woodblock. The scale we're talking about here, there's my hand, there's my finger, the calligraphy for the preface, 
the prefaces, decorative. Look at this, just a little gradation in the middle of every leaf. Why did they bother doing this? Because the consumers were looking for a very, very, very high quality product. I can't read the lettering of the preface, I'm sorry, it may have been uh, translated somewhere. The British Museum has a copy of this album. Many major museums do have a copy of it. It's not gloriously rare, but it is rare to find one in such gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful condition. The container you see here is actually, it's a water container. This is for watering some of the flowers. This is the flower arranging goods here. This is not tea ceremony goods. Presumably the lady of the house here, before the day starts, she's already maybe done her flower arranging. This is to introduce the whole thing. These are flower arranging goods, not tea ceremony goods. The first picture is Dobu Shirabe. And what they are doing, the, the host, hostess type people here are getting ready for the day's ceremony. They're unpacking from the storage all the different goods they will be using today. They're getting bowls ready. There's going to be food served as part of the tea ceremony. So there are bowls and cups and saucers, all kinds of goods they're getting, uh, getting ready. And also we get a hint here, this is happening at the new year because there is a table with the mochi the ebi and we have plum in the background but this is they, they may be mixing up we're going to see one day's tea ceremony but the faces of the people change the kimonos change and even the, the the season may change so it's a bit of a pastiche we're going to see it as though it was a single day but don't complain about the continuity because the kimono patterns will change and things like that it's not intended to have continuity picture to picture. There's no reason for them to carve the same kimono pattern on 15 different prints. So don't get upset about that part of it. We're going to see the flow of the day as a tea ceremony, but don't sweat the continuity. I'm blocking the microphone or with the book. Okay, I try and keep this all in mind. I, sorry, sorry. So maybe what I should do then while I'm doing this, if I take the mic off my shirt, one second, let me close the book for a second here. If I take the mic off my shirt and put it in front of me on the stand here, Is that better? The microphone's over there in front of me now, so I won't bother when I'm touching it and using this. Is that okay? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Chocolate egg to whoever gets that reference. The next one is, I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. Mizuya Koshirai, getting the preparation room ready. Raise the mic level. I can do that a bit, actually. I can cut the gain here. It's minus 1.3 dB. We can cut to 0 dB. The gain has been raised to max that I can raise. Okay, getting the preparation room ready was the title of it. Let's have a zoom in. I don't know. It's the light here. It's hard to show you. There are many, many, many woodblock effects on here. Part of this, part of her obi here has got what's called shomen zuri. I'm limited into how far I can smooth this around. Here we are. Can you see it? Can you see a bit of the shininess? There's a deep, rich black shininess on her obi when we get the angle just right. Her kimono has full embossing of the kimono pattern. There's uh, more, there's a more uh, shininess on the lacquered tray she's holding. It's really, really difficult to get you to see all the aspects of this thing. Up in the title cartouche for each print, there is full detailed embossing. To see these things held in the hand close up is the only way really to enjoy these. They're actually glorious, glorious pieces of work. And this album is in absolutely perfect pinpoint condition. 
Someone's saying, is that a metallic gray color in the background? You mean up here? It's not metallic, it's just gray. There's certainly some blue pigment mixed in here. If I were mixing this today, I'd use Sumi and uh, Indigo perhaps to do this. That's a blue tinted gray. And I think it's printed twice. There's a base tone, I can see some brush strokes one way, and I can see some brush strokes the other way. My guess is base tone twice, and then of course, look, gradations. Oh, come on, guys, look at this. How many blocks must this have had? They've put a gradation here, which doesn't bump up to this one. So that means the background block for this must be different from this, because they're able to do a gradation here without bumping up on top. Come on, come on. So instead of one block for the background gray for this alcove, it's how many blocks? I don't know. Hello, Udegao-san's just come in in the back. I have no idea how many blocks. Her kimono split up. Instead of one block for her kimono, They've done it in two blocks, the top part of our kimono and the bottom part of our kimono in separate blocks because there's a gradation applied to this area. Now, if you just did it all in one block for the kimono, you could put a gradation from the top or a gradation from the bottom, but because you want a gradation part way down, that means you've got to split it into two blocks, at least. So there's one block for the top part and another block for the bottom part. You print the base tone over both of them and then you do a gradation on the bottom part because you can't do that gradation if this is in the way. And this just goes on and on and on through this entire thing. You can see each shelf has its own gradation. How about the other woman? Is there a separate gradation partway through her kimono? Don't think so. Not quite clear on that. There's an insane, and I use the word in its literal, literal meaning. There's an insane amount of work in each and every one of these prints. When I first got it, we got it in show and tell, we went flip, 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 that's okay, my God. Look at this, there's a scroll here. They've put a freaking gradation on the scroll. Look at this, if I close up on this thing, do you see what they've done? They've put a blue tint, blue gradation from one end of the scroll to the other. Who would notice? Really? We have got to get these photographed. We haven't done photographs yet. We have got to get these photographed and into the collection. What is that? That's number one, two. We've got to picture number two. It's already 927. Don't sweat it. We'll do maybe three or four, then we'll pack it up and we'll come back tomorrow. I really, really, really want to look at this instead of going clip, 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 clip. Let's move to number three. Let me look at my cheat sheet for the notes. It says, calling for guests to come and sit in the tea room for the first sitting, Shoza Mukai. We don't get to the actual tea part until picture number, the actual tea part is picture number 14 out of 16. So you hang on, we're not gonna see tea for a while yet. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Mirta-san, my God, how many people have we got here today? <laughs> Four. Yeah, because we have new stuff. Okay, okay. So it's a, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Yes. Actually, ladies, for a minute, we're still got a couple of minutes left here. Can you talk really quietly for the next few minutes? Sorry. Thank you very much. There's a new, uh, a new lady at the back here. One of the people that just came in is a new new staff member here and funny enough she has a Netherlands background and Mietesan also is from the Netherlands. So today if you're a customer in, thinking about in a Saksa, thinking of coming into the shop and if you're from the Netherlands we can give you stereo translation. So what do you, I've already forgotten I'm sorry I'm trying to do too many things in my mind go back to my notes this is calling for guests to come and sit in the tea room for the first sitting and the Japanese title is Shoza Mukai. And I think we've maybe moved ahead now. This is uh, cherry blossoms in spring. So as I said, there isn't going to be continuity. We're maybe even going to go through the whole year. There might be winter scenes coming up, but the progression is what it is. We need to zoom in here. Look at this. This one's kind of busy for me. I don't know. 
the other ones have had a fair amount of open space. This one they've jammed everything but the kitchen sink in here. Our guests, the trees, the bushes. And again, just gradations, gradations, gratuitous, gratuitous gradations everywhere. Everything that could have a gradation applied to it has. And the same thing, look at this lantern. This gradation and this gradation require the cutting of a separate block. You can't just cut one block for the stone. You could do that for the base stone, but you can't put a gradation on that because you need a separate block for this area to be able to put that gradation on. And the same thing for this side. It just goes on and on and on. Someone's asking, what goes on at her feet on the right? Are you talking about the lady outside? Well, she's wearing geta. We can see one of them. She has come in on the stones. She will come into the gate, leave her footwear outside, and there will be separate sandals and footwear inside. I don't think we can see their feet. So I don't, uh, someone says, I think the person outside is a man. No, sir, this is a lady, I believe. Look at the hair though. If I were gonna bet, no, it's an obi, look at this. No, 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 this is a woman. This is a woman. The kimono, the obi, everything. This is a woman, this is a woman. This is not a samurai hairstyle. It's just a hairstyle that must have been popular in 1897. Details, details, details. A book like this, I think, what was the purpose of it? It would have been multi-purpose, of course, just as a spectacular, glorious object to look at. It would also have been, it's not a tea ceremony manual, but it would have helped people who never have a chance to have a tea ceremony see what's going on. One more thing, there's shoji screen here. I don't know if you can see it, but let me try and move around. There's an embossed... You can't see it. You have to wait for the pictures to come in the catalog. There's an embossed shoji screen here. Okay, one more and then we'll take a break and we'll come back to see the rest of these later. There's no way we can go through this whole thing today. Let's just look at one more for now. Back to my cheat sheet. This is entering the tea room, welcoming guests and inviting them to sit. To sit. This is Seki Idi. Seki is seat, Idi is coming in. And I guess, again, I've never been in this situation myself, entering the tea ceremony room. This is outside, this woman is going in and she's turned around and putting her sandals in place outside. The tea ceremony room is in there. We're still in the outer garden. Gradations, gradations, gradations. Look at this. Free gradations on the ground, gradations on many stones, the walls. Again, the same thing as before we saw in that internal cupboard. In order to put a gradation down from here, this area and this area have to be cut on different blocks. This has been planned from the beginning. Could you get away with it? If you've got one block there and you want to do a gradation here, I could imagine making a mask, putting a brush here, just doing it. I wonder if they did that using masks. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I've never ever seen or heard of any other printer using a mask. But if I were trying to do that now, I could think of that as an alternative way to do this. What would this book be worse now? I really don't know. We got really, well, partly lucky, partly good hunting. I think I paid about 30,000 yen for it, something on the order of maybe, in current exchange rates, about $200. I got a stunningly good deal. I have no idea what this would be worth now. 
if the prints were here individually, if we had them in our shop, they would be something like uh, three or four hundred dollars for one of these. And this is an album of 16 prints. The title, somebody's asking, the title is Cha no Yu Nichi Nichi So, and it's by uh, Toshikata, Mizuno Toshikata, published by Akiyama Buemon in Meiji 29, which the bot and John tells me is, uh, I've already forgotten, 1890, was it 1896? I'm sorry, Meiji 29. There is, uh, there is an uh, uh, announcement at the bottom here of the year this was made. It's been a bit trimmed. These, these announcements here, some of them have got trimmed by the um, process of making this into an album. If we can maybe see one of them here, look at the bottom. It reads from the right. I can't get too close. It's Meiji 29, and we also have Akiyama, Akiyama Buemon, the publisher here, and the Tokyo City address of the publisher. But in some of the prints, that's been a little bit chopped off by the process of making these into the album and putting in the outside binding. Okay, let's leave it there for now. We're, we're past our appointed time, and there's no point in just going on and on and on and on and on. Let's save some of this for next time. We've seen one, two, three, four prints. There are 16 in the album. Let's just save it and look at a few more next time. Uh, I think you've got the last kanji. I you know Vivid KP's got it. Chano you Nichi. Nichi Nichi, you don't, you know. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll get the kanji ready for next time. Nichi Nichi, you don't write the same character twice. There's a, there's a way to write the second character with a, with a shorthand. And that's the wrong soul. That's the wrong soul. Okay, let me get up and get out of here. Let's zoom up the outside camera for a minute. I've got a little bit of work done today. This is Thursday. We'll be streaming again Saturday morning for me, Friday night for most of you guys. I'm not sure the work. Maybe I'll be hacking away at that block still, the same block, and we'll look at some more of this book. Thanks very, very much. And I'll see you again in a couple of days. Yes, Vivid's got it. Nietzsche, Nietzsche. That's the way they do it. Yes. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Bye for now.